everybody, it's Kenny, and for today we have ourselves a fun little yoga flow. Today it's going to be all about animals, so I've included a whole bunch of animal poses, so this should be a fun flow to get you guys going today. So let's find our way down to our mats and take child's pose. So bring those big toes to touch behind you, press those hips back towards the heels, reach the arms nice and long in front of you, resting that forehead on the mat. Beginning to draw that attention inward, focusing on that breath. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, let it all go through the nose. Another nice deep breath in like that. Really fill up the belly, expand the lungs. Exhale, nice, long, slow exhale. Breathe it all out, follow that breath all the way down. So let's take this time to make ourselves present on our mat, focusing in to our practice today. Maybe shake that head no from side to side, gently massaging the forehead. Stay with that nice deep pattern of breathing in and out through the nose. So very often we take the breath for granted, so take this time to really, really inhale deeply and breathe that life into your body. Should feel really, really good. Nice deep breaths. Supplying that oxygen to the brain, to the heart, to the blood, everything. So very, very important. Then let's gently um, lift the forearms slightly off the mat. Press the palms down. And see if you could press those hips back just a little bit further towards the heels. Really snuggle those hips back. Think about drawing those lower ribs down to your thighs, make it all nice and long and flat, straightening out that spine. Then maybe take your head and gently turn it to one side, resting one of your temples on the mat. Should provide a nice gentle neck stretch for you guys. Turn your head to the other side, resting the opposite temple on the mat. Able top position, coming up to all fours, rocking those hips side to side. Rock forward and back, warming up those wrists a little bit. And then we're going to, staying up on our knees with the hips elevated, gently walk the arms forward, finding puppy pose. So resting the forehead on the mat just like we did in our child's pose. Once again, you can sway those hips side to side if that feels good to warm everything up. So really roll those shoulders back and down, stretching out those arms as long as you can. Maybe feeling a stretch in your lower back. And then gently walk the hands back up towards your body, coming back to all fours. We're going to go through a couple rounds of cat and cow pose. So let's take a nice deep breath in, drop the belly, lift the gaze to the sky, find your cow pose. 
Exhale, roll up through the back like, like a cat, tucking the chin to chest. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. And go through a few more rounds on your own breath, your own pace, whatever feels good to you. This is your practice. You go where you go, take what you need, leave what you don't. Then after that next round of breath, come back to a neutral tabletop. We're going to curl our toes under, gently lift the hips up, and press back to our first downward facing dog. So while we're here, let's take the time to pedal out the heels, maybe bend the knees, hips side to side, maybe shake that head, yes and no, whatever movement you need. Take a nice deep breath. Bend the knees and slowly tiptoe your way to the top of your mats. We're going to grab onto our elbows, separate the feet hip width distance, about two fists width between the feet. Once again, grab onto the elbows and allow yourself to hang nice and heavy in your red doll pose. So relax the neck, relax the shoulders, let the head hang nice and heavy. Maybe shake it yes and no. You can sway side to side. Maybe lift those toes to engage the feet. Helps to relax the legs a little bit more. You can keep the knees bent or straight if you want to. Uh, if you bend the knees, it helps to soften that flexion in your lower back. So if you're having lower back issues, maybe bend the knees. It'll help you out a little bit. And think about drawing those ribs to your thighs. Really folding yourself in half. Breathing nice and deep. Slowly release the hands to your mat, allowing the fingertips to drape towards your chest. Together, inhale, let's find a half lift, roll the shoulders back and down, flattening out the spine, shine the crown of the head forward, take a deep breath in. Exhale, let's plant our hands to the mat and gently step our left foot back. And we can lower that leg down. We're going to rock, walk the hand in front of the, uh, inside the, Right foot, we're going to find lizard pose to start things off. So many variations on this one. So you can just uh, stay right here. If you want, you can open that right knee and press on a little bit to open the hip if you like. You can lower down to the forearms if you like. You could even, if you need a little bit more, you can lift that back leg. Just find whatever variation serves you. Beginning to warm up everything here. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Out through the nose. If that back leg is lifted, gently drop that knee back down. Now we're going to straighten that front foot and find half splits or half Hanuman or half monkey pose. So we're going to do that. Just fold over that straightened front leg. Carefully bend into that front foot. We're going to step that back foot forward, finding a forward fold. Inhale, find a half lift, resetting the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Then we're going to take our left hand, grabbing onto our right ankle, and reach that right arm high to the sky. Breathe into the twist. This twist, maybe think about pressing your Left shoulder forward in the direction you're facing. Kind of helps intensify the twist a little bit more. Most people want to pull with their top hand for the twist, but I find it helpful to push with the bottom, with the bottom shoulder. Kind of helps get you in the twist a little bit more. Slowly bring that top hand down. 
Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, plant the hands to your mat. This time we're going to step that right foot back and lower that knee if you want. Take the hand inside the foot and we're going to find lizard pose on this side. So once again, if you want to stay here, this is great. If you want a little bit more, open that knee, press on it. Down to your elbows. You can lift that back leg. Back knee, I should say. Just go where you go and enjoy the pose. Slowly drop that back knee if it's lifted, and we're going to straighten through that front leg, finding our half monkey or half splits on this side. So just rock those hips back and fold over that straightened front leg. Carefully bend in that front leg. And we're going to step the back foot forward, coming to a forward fold. Go for a half lift. Exhale. Bend the knees. All the way up to stand. Reaching those arms up nice and tall overhead. Take a deep breath in. Reach up nice and high. Exhale. Bring the hands to prayer at heart center and down by our sides. Palms facing forward for our. Tadasana, our mountain pose. So while we're hanging out here, those shoulders back and down. Press those fingertips towards the earth. Squeeze the thighs together. Lift those toes to engage the feet. Should feel really, really powerful in this pose. Just like a mountain, as the name implies. You can gaze open and gaze up. Pausing here for a few deep, powerful breaths. Take a nice deep breath in, sweep the arms nice and high, reach up. Exhale, let's open that chest, shine the heart forward, cactus the arms. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, sweep the arms high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant those hands in a mat. And step back to a high plank, high push up position. Take a deep breath in, exhale, lower all the way down your mats, squeeze those elbows nice and tight to your ribs, take a deep breath in and lift that chest, finding cobra pose, exhale, lower down, inhale up to tabletop, exhale, press it back to downward facing dog. So that'll be your first option for your vinyasa, your flow today. Once again, find whatever movements feel good. Then let's take a nice deep breath in, lift the heels, bend the knees, travel to the top of our mats, inhale, half lift, exhale, forward fold, inhale, rise all the way up, nice and tight, deep breath in, exhale, cactus those arms, open that chest, shine the heart forward, inhale, reach up, nice and tall, exhale, forward fold, inhale, half lift, exhale, plant those hands in a mat, step back to high plank. Take a nice deep breath in, this time on your exhale, gently lower the knees, the chest and the chin, keeping the seat slightly elevated, squeeze those elbows in nice and tight, deep breath in, lift that chest, exhale, press back to downward facing dog. So that is your second option for your vinyasa flow today. One more option to come, deep breath in, lift the heels. The knees travel. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, forward fold. 
And I'll reach those arms nice and tall, maybe add a baby back bend this time around if that feels good. Deep breath in. Exhale, cactus those arms. Open that chest, shine the heart forward. Inhale, sweep those arms nice and high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant those hands in the mat and step it back to a high plank. This time on your inhale, shift forward slightly on the toes. Exhale, lower halfway down, squeeze those elbows in. Inhale, upward facing dog. Squeeze those thighs together. Squeeze the heels towards each other. Pull that chest and the lungs forward, deep breath in. And exhale, press back to downward facing dog. So that is your third option. It's also the most challenging option. That'll be the uh, option that I'll be queuing for you guys. And also know as a fourth option, you can always skip the flow at any time and just press back to down dog. If you're not feeling the flow, don't do it. And also know that child's pose is always available should you need to reground, refocus, reconnect, maybe catch your breath, grab a drink of water, whatever you need. So child's pose is there as well. All right, so let's move on here. Take a nice deep breath in, lift that right leg high to the sky. Exhale, bring that knee to your nose. Inhale, send it up nice and high. Exhale, step that hand, foot through between the hands. Dial down that back foot. Reach those arms nice and tall, finding your warrior one pose. So nice deep bend in that front knee, keeping the knee either stacked over the ankle or slightly angled out towards your pinky toe. Just don't want it caving inward. Stresses the knee ligaments that way. And the back foot, you want the heel and the knife edge of your back foot planted firmly into the mat. Hips are squared to the front. Roll those shoulders. Arms nice and high. You can rotate the pinky. And let's, uh, just for fun, let's lift the toes, engage the feet. Relax the legs and see if we can sink in just a little bit deeper. Nice deep breath in. On your exhale, reach those arms forward. Roll the shoulders back and down. Pausing here for a few breaths. On your next inhale, pull it open like an archer with the bow, finding your warrior two. So squaring those hips to the side this time. Reaching those hands long to the front and back like you're being pulled apart in two separate directions. Gaze over that front middle finger. Once again, lift those toes. Relax the legs. Sink it in nice and deep. Take a deep breath in. Flip that front palm to the sky. Reach back and reverse your war. Keeping that nice deep bend in the front knee. Reaching back. Another deep breath in. Reach back a little further if you can. This time on our exhale, we're going to find extended side angle. So bring that right elbow to your right thigh. Take that left hand over your ear and reach it towards the front of the room. You can take that right hand to your ankle or to the mat if you like. Just really, really reach that top hand over. Getting a nice side body stretch on that left side. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, plant both hands to the mat, framing the front foot. Let's lift that torso up off the thigh. Step that back foot forward. Inhale, find a half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep those arms nice and high. Let's sink those knees and hips, finding our chair pose. So make sure the weight is in the heels. Squeeze the knees together. Lift the toes. Kind of helps keep the weight back. Roll those shoulders back and down. You can rotate the pinkies in if you like. Pausing here for a few breaths. More nice deep breath in. Then on our exhale, we'll bring the hands down. Stand up, finding our Tadasana pose. So let's open that chest, shine the heart forward. Standing up nice and tall. Inhale, sweep those hands nice and high. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant those hands in a mat. Step back to high plank. Lower down halfway. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Lift that left leg high to the sky. Exhale, squeeze that knee in towards your nose. Inhale, send it high. Exhale, step it through. Let's make our way up to our warrior one. Dial down that back foot. Sweep those arms high. Deep bend in the front knee. Knife edge of the back foot and the heel press firmly into the mat. Hips square. The... Pull the shoulders back and down. Deep breath in. Exhale, reach those arms forward. Roll the shoulders back and down. Extend the arms just a little bit further. On your next inhale, pull it open. Find your warrior two. Flip that back in reverse. Find one more deep breath in. Reach back a little further if you can. Then on our exhale, we're going to find our side angle, extended side angle. So left elbow, left thigh. Reach that right arm over the ear to the front of the room. Nice side body stretch in that right side. Deep breath in. Then on your exhale, plant both hands to the mat. Lift that torso. Step the back foot forward. Find a half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, hands high. Sink the hips low. Chair pose. breath in. On our exhale, we'll bring the arms down, stand up nice and tall, Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Inhale, arms sweep high, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, exhale, plant the hands in the mat, step it back to high plank, lower down halfway, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. All right, then, so we're going to flow through that two more times at a little bit quicker pace. So let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, let it go. One more time, deep breath in. Exhale, sigh it all out. And let's flow. Deep breath in, lift that right leg high to the sky. Exhale, hug that knee to nose. Inhale, send it up. Step the foot through, rise up. Warrior one, those arms forward, pull it open, finding warrior two, flip that front palm, reach back, reverse, exhale, find extended side angle, place both hands, back foot steps forward, half lift, forward fold, inhale, arms high, hips low, chair pose. Deep breath in, exhale, arms down, rise up, Tadasana pose, inhale, arms sweep high, exhale, forward fold, inhale, half lift, exhale, plant the hands in a mat, step it back, and go through your flow. Inhale, take that left leg high to the sky, exhale, hug that knee to nose, inhale, send it up. Exhale, step through, dial down the back foot, warrior one. Reach the arms long to the front. Pull it open, finding warrior two. Flip that front palm to the sky, reach back, reverse that warrior. Find your extended side angle. Both hands find the mat, back foot steps forward, half lift. Forward fold, hips low, chair pose. Deep breath in, arms down, stand up, mountain pose. Deep breath in, reach up, exhale, forward fold. Half lift, 
plant the hands on the mat, step it back to high plank, lower down halfway, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. All right, everybody, one more time, last time, best time. Deep breath in, send that right leg high, hug the knee to nose, send it up high, step through, warrior one, arms reach forward, warrior two, flip the palm, reverse, find that extended side angle, hands plant to the mat, back foot steps forward, half lift, forward fold, rise up, chair pose, arms down, stand up, mountain pose, arms sweep high, deep breath. Exhale, forward fold, half lift, plant those hands in the mat, step back, and go through your flow. Inhale, sends that left leg high, hug the knee to nose, send it up high, step the foot through, rise up, warrior one, arms reach forward, pull it open, finding warrior two, flip the front palm, reach back, reverse, Extended side angle, hands plant, back foot steps forward, half lift, forward fold, arms high, hips low, chair pose, arms down, stand up, mountain pose, arms reach high, exhale, forward fold, half lift, plant those hands in the mat, step back, lower down halfway, upward facing, downward facing dog. All right, now everybody, once we've reached our downward facing dog, let's drop to our knees and let's take a child's pose or any other variation you would like to take. If you would like to take a dolphin, you can do that by simply coming up to your elbows. It's basically downward facing dog on your elbows. So if you want to take dolphin, prop yourself up on your elbows and walk those feet in. Or if you want to just take regular child's pose, you can do that. Or if you like to explore rabbit pose, you can bring the arms long by the side of your body. And rest that crown of your head on the, on the mat. Maybe massaging that neck a little bit. Or rabbit pose. Or just, if you like a child's pose, just hang out there. Let's slowly make our table top up to all fours, curl the toes under, and let's press back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in, bring that right leg high to the sky. Exhale, step the foot through between the hands. Now we're going to lower that back knee to the ground. Sweep the arms nice and tall, finding our kneeling crescent pose. Then we're going to hook the thumbs together, and we're going to press the hips forward and down, lift the chest up and back, finding dragon pose. Keeping that right hand high, take that left hand, your left calf, finding half camel pose. So reach that left hand up, keeping that nice bend in your back going on, keeping those hips pressing forward and down, reaching that right hand high to the sky, gazing upward. Another deep breath in, slowly lower both hands to the mat, lift that back knee up, both feet facing forward, all back feet, sweep those arms high, finding your crescent lunge. Sweep those toes, sink in nice and slow. Bring 
those hands of prayer at heart center. And let's take a nice deep breath in, lengthen out that spine. And exhale, find your twist over to your right side, hooking that left elbow over the right thigh. If you want to open your arms like wings, if that's your thing, go for it. And if you'd like to, uh, you can also modify by lowering that back knee to the ground if it's kind of tough to twist and balance at the same time. The most important thing about this pose is a twist. It's not about the balance. So if you're having trouble balancing and twisting, drop the back knee and twist in a little bit more. Gently plant the hands to the mat, and let's find our way up to our warrior two. Dial, dialing down that back foot. Deep breath in. Now we're going to find our regular side angle pose. So take that left hand, reach it up to the sky, pull that top shoulder back, gaze up, and take that right elbow to your right thigh. The most important thing is having that openness in the chest. So once you've achieved that, if you want a little bit more, you can take that right hand down to your ankle or to the mat. Or if you have a bind, if you want to explore a bind, you can take that hand behind your back, catch it underneath. And if you'd like to explore a bird of paradise, option for that as well. So lifting up and flying your bird. If you're up, gently lower back down, coming back to our side angle, and lower that top hand down to the mat, both hands frame the front foot, step that right foot back to meet the left, and I'm going to spin around the opposite way here, then we're going to spin on the knife edge of that left foot, reaching that right hand high to the sky, finding your side plank, so with this one, if you want to modify, you can drop that bottom knee if you like. If you want to amplify, you can lift that top leg, find a tree pose. You can grab onto your big toe if that's available to you. Just find whatever variation serves you today. One more deep breath in, reach up high. Exhale, plant the hands in the mat. And let's press back to downward facing dog. Option to flow if you want, or just simply stay in down dog. If you like to flow, shift forward to high plank, lower down halfway, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Let's take a nice deep breath in, lift that left leg high to the sky, and up it through, dropping that back knee to the ground. Reach those arms nice and high. Hook those thumbs together, press the hips forward and down, lift the chest up and back, finding dragon pose. Keeping that left hand reaching nice and high to the sky, take the right hand down to your right calf, half camel pose, gaze up. Keeping those hips pressing forward and down, reaching that top hand up nice and high, breathing into this pose. Slowly bring both hands to your mat, lift the back leg up, the back foot I should say, the back knee, and let's make our way up to our crescent lunge. So once again, both feet are facing forward. Staying on a ball of the back. Back. Modify. You can drop that back knee if that works better for you. Bring those hands of prayer at heart center. Deep breath in to straighten out that spine. And exhale. Let's find that twist over to the left side this time. Hooking that right elbow over the left thigh. Once again, option to drop that back knee if that's better for you. It's all about the twist, not about the balance. If you want to open those arms like wings, go for it. Let's 
Slowly lower those hands down to your mat. Let's find our way back up to our warrior two. Destination side angle. Reach that right hand up. Pull the shoulder up and back. Left elbow to left thigh. Keeping that openness in the chest. And once you have that openness, you can take that hand down, that bottom hand down to your ankle or down to the mat. Option for half bind, full bind, bird of paradise if you got it. Maybe even a bound half moon if you're feeling that today. If you're up or if you're in a bind, make your way back down and release that bind. Coming back to our side angle. And carefully lower that top hand down. Step the left foot back and spin onto the knife edge of your right foot. Set that high to the sky. Side plank. Slowly lower the top hand down, press back to downward facing dog or go through a flow if you like. If you want to shift forward to high plank, lower down halfway, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Deep breath in, lift the heels, bend the knees, and travel your way to the top of your mat. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms high. Sink the hips low, chair pose. Bring the hands to prayer at heart center. Straighten out that spine and find your twist over to the right side. So with this one, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your uh, knees are even. If your left knee is poking out more than the right, gently pull back on the hips to realign that. And I'll find it helpful if I press that knee and the elbow helps to uh, engage the lower part of the body, creating a little bit more stability in a pose, at least for me anyway. You can keep your hands in prayer if you want to open them like wings, go for it. That's your thing. And slowly lower the hands down to your mat, coming to a forward fold, find that halfway lift on an inhale, exhale fold it in. And heel toe the feet, hip width distance. So once again, about two fists width between the feet. We're going to take our first two fingers, sometimes called your peace fingers and your thumbs, grabbing on your big toes. Just allow yourself to hang nice and heavy in our yogi toe lock. So you can sway side to side. Shake the head yes and no. Just relax that neck, relax the shoulders. Allow the head to hang nice and heavy. And breathe, most important of all. Slowly release the toes. Heel toe the feet back together. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, forward fold, inhale, hands high, hips low, final chair pose of the class. So let's make this last one our best one. See if we can lower those hips just a little bit more. Bring the hands to prayer at heart center, and let's take that twist over to the left side. Once again, you can stay at prayer. You can open the arms like wings if you like. Whatever you want to do, go where you go, it's your practice. Take what serves you. Slowly bring the hands down to your mat, finding our forward fold. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, fold it in. Once again, heel toe the feet, hip width distance. 
And this time we're going to take gorilla pose. So we're going to take the hands, palms facing up, just slide them underneath your feet. And if this pose doesn't work for you, if you simply don't like it, you can take the yogi toe like we just did. Or if you want to just take ragdoll, you can clasp the hands behind your back for a shoulder rinse if that feels better. Just take it and go where you go. So in these forward bends, you can keep the knees bent or straighten them if you like. If you bend the knees, you get more of a stretch in the lower back. If the knees are straight, you get more of a hamstring stretch. So just take whatever feels better for you today. Everybody's different. Every day is different. <clears throat> Slowly slide those hands off from underneath the feet. You'll toe the feet back together. Well, actually, keep the feet where they were. Inhale, find a half lift. Exhale, forward fold, and then heel toe the feet, the mat with distance, and lower the hips down, finding our yogi squat or goddess squat, whichever you prefer to call it. So you just lower the hips down, press those elbows into the knees, sit up nice and tall. And if you like, this is a great pose to sit on a block. If that feels better on the knees and the hips, go there. And also, now you also have a, a beer for a little while, so if you would like to practice your crow pose, you can do that by bending the elbows as you would in low plank. Place your knees on the uh, triceps, gaze forward, and lean forward until eventually your feet come off the ground, and you find your crow pose. Or if you'd like to do crane, it's similar to crow, except the arms are straight, just like the legs of a crane. So for that one, keep the arms nice and straight. Actually, coming from a squat, tuck those knees into your armpits, straighten the arms, look nice and straight, and tip forward, point one toe, keep leaning forward, and point the other toe, and there you have your crane. doing or just simply hang out in that yogi squat it can be a very calm relaxing pose if you allow it to be just breathe nice and deep allowing everything to just open up slowly plant those hands to your mat lift the hips up heel to the feet back together Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Slowly rise all the way up to standing. Reach those arms nice and tall overhead. Maybe walk those legs out from all that bending and twisting. Now we're going to find our balancing series. So let's bring the hands back to prayer at heart center. And so sticking with the uh, with eagle pose. So for this pose, we're going to ground down to that right foot. Cross that left foot over, the left thigh over the right thigh. You can sink in nice and low. If you have the, uh, the flexibility, if you can double wrap your legs, you can tuck the one foot behind the other calf. I don't have that luxury. <laughs> and then you're going to take the whatever leg is on top. That's the arm that goes under. So left leg's on top, left arm goes under, and find your eagle pose. Sit nice and deep. Maybe try lifting up with that bottom elbow. Gaze up towards the fingers if you can for full expression. Now we're going to keep the bind, so keep those hands bound. Unbind the legs. Bring the knee up to the chest. Kick it back, finding airplane pose with eagle arms. Slowly unwind the hands, place the hands on the mat, keeping the back foot elevated, three point balance, or standing splits, whichever you prefer. 
and slowly lower that left leg down to meet the right. And now still forward fold, and you'll rise all the way up. Once again, you can walk out those legs, whatever movement feels good. Bring the hands back to prayer, and let's set up for our other side. So this time we're going to uh, ground down to the left foot. Take that right thigh, the right leg, cross it over to the left. And once again, the right leg is over, so right arm goes under. Wrap it up. Sink it nice and low. Raise those hands as high as you can. Gaze over that top fingers if you can. A full expression. Once again, keep the hands bound as they are. Unbind the legs, hug that right knee up to the chest, and kick the foot back, finding pose with eagle arm. I mean, airplane pose. Or warrior three, however you want to think of it. Keeping that back leg elevated, gently lower the hands down. Three-point balance, standing splits. And then gently lower that right leg to meet the left. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Once again, inhale, rise all the way up. Stand nice and tall. Maybe add a baby back bend if that feels good. Deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant the hands on the mat, and step it back to down dog, or if you're still feeling like it, go for a flow. Deep breath in, send that right leg high to the sky. Exhale, step it through, dial down that back foot. Arms sweep high, warrior one. Open up to warrior two. From here, we're going to find triangle pose. So gently straighten that front leg. Take that, reach it up and back, opening that chest, pulling the shoulder back, keep the gaze upward. Hand down your right leg, finding your triangle pose. So this is another one of those poses where the openness in the chest is the most important thing. So it doesn't matter how far this hand goes down the leg. So even if you're right here, it doesn't matter. As long as you can keep that openness in your chest. That's the important thing. And if you have a block, it's an awesome pose for that by placing it in front of that, actually on the inside of that right foot. Creating more openness and a little bit more space. Slowly lower that top hand down and step that back foot forward slightly. Both feet facing forward, and we're going to fold over that straight in front leg for pyramid pose. So here's a great pose, once again, for a block. Place it in front of your foot. You can place the palms down on the block. And the trick that I've found <clears throat> that works for me is, if you're having trouble straightening the leg, if you tip forward slightly, straighten the front leg, and keeping the leg straight, replant the back leg, and that might help you. Works for me anyway. Carefully bend in that front knee, and then we're going to walk our hands over to our left. Heel toe the feet as wide as you would like them to be for our standing wide-legged straddle fold. So for this pose, there's a many, many arm variations. So if you want to just keep the hands flat on the mat, you can do that. You can grab the ankles. You can reach the hands back between the legs if you want. You can rest on your forearms. You can clasp the hands back for a shoulder rinse if that feels good. So... Pick one variation, it's hard to pick just one, and go there. Good thing on the other side, so if you want to try something different, you can. And if not, if you're really digging what you're doing this time, you get to do it all over again. So find whatever variation works for you. If 
the arms are up, gently bring them back down to your mat. Over towards your right foot. Bend into that knee and step it back to down dog. Or if you want, go for your flow. Deep breath in, send that left leg high to the sky. Step the foot through, down on the back foot. Arms sweep high. Warrior one. Open up to two. Let's find that triangle. So straighten that front leg. Reach that right hand up and back. Gaze up. Slide that left hand down the left leg and find that triangle pose. Sinking into your degree once again. Works great for openness and space. That's what this pose is all about. Slowly lower that top hand down. Hop that back foot up a little bit. And we're going to straighten over that front leg for our pyramid pose. So however you get there, just fold over that straightened front leg. Slowly bend into that front leg, and then we're going to walk our hands over to the right this time, separating the feet as wide as you would like them to be, and finding our second round of our standing wide-legged straddle fold. So once again, pick an arm variation that works for you, you know what you need, and go there. If the hands are up, once again, bring them back down to your mat. Bend into that knee and step it back to downward facing dog. Or if you want to go through a flow, you can do that. And here from our downward facing dog, we're going to gently lower down to our knees and all the way down to our bellies. And for our uh, back bend, we're going to first start off with crocodile pose. So just Stack the forearms on top of each other. Rest the head on the arms. This is pretty much my favorite pose. I could do this all day. And from here, if you want to stay here, which I wouldn't blame you if you did, or if you want to take a little bit more, you can find Sphinx pose by propping yourself up on your elbows. Kind of like when you used to watch TV as a little kid. Or maybe you still do. I know I do. Finding Sphinx Pose, or if you like to go just a little deeper, you can straighten out the hands and find Seal Pose. So we're just going to have one nice long round of this, so pick whatever you like to do. If you want to go through all three, if you want to stay in Crocodile or just stay in Seal or Sphinx, go for that. If you want to cycle through all three, however you want to do it, it's up to you. Yogi's Choice. Wherever you are, you can gently lower down and bend the knees and windshield wipe your legs back and forth to reset the spine. And then let's press our way up to a tabletop, cross the feet at the ankles, bring them through, and let's come to lying on our backs. So we're going to find our inversion. So we're going to, uh, you have the option to take waterfall, supported waterfall. You can take shoulder stamp that's in your practice. You want to take legs up a wall. It's really, really fun. It's basically what it sounds like. You just scoot yourself against the wall, put the legs up. Relaxing pose. Favorite is supported waterfall. So if you have a block, you can simply take the feet to the sky, tuck the block against your lower back, 
and relax. You can take the arms out like, like a T if you like. Rest them down by your sides, over your head. One hand to the belly, one hand to the heart, whichever you prefer. And slowly begin to lower yourself down. <clears throat> if you have a block beneath your back, gently remove it, coming down one vertebrae at a time. You can use the arms as brakes, coming all the way down to our mats. Now let's bring the soles of our feet to the touch. Allow the knees to splay open wide, finding Supta Baddha Konasana, or reclining butterfly pose. So if you want to keep the arms down by your side, one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly, take them out like a T. Reach them overhead, whichever you like to do. Slowly bring those knees back together. Maybe rock those knees from side to side. Give yourself a nice hug in. Squeeze everything into your chest. Rock side to side. Give yourself a couple rocks forward and back. Then make your way back to a downward facing dog, however you like to get there. We're going to set up our hip opener. So we're going to take a half pigeon for our hip opener. So if you want to take half pigeon on your back, you can do that. I'll demonstrate both versions. So I'll set you up on your bellies first. So Take that right leg high to the sky. Bring that right knee behind the right wrist. Parallel that right shin to the top of your mat as much as you can. Make sure that back leg is nice and straight. Square the hips. Sit up nice and tall. And exhale. Fold forward into your half pigeon. So with this pose, you don't want to feel any stretching in the knee. If you feel that, come out of it immediately. It's a bad in the knee joint. So make sure that you are, uh, if you're feeling any stretch in the knee, immediately come out and readjust. You want to feel the stretch in your hip, not the knee. All right, and if you would like to take this pose on your back, simply lay on your back with the soles of the feet on the mat and take that right leg, cross the right ankle over the right thigh. If this is enough, you could stay here. You could press down on the knee. Or you could reach through the legs, grab onto that shin or behind the left thigh, whichever you like to do. So there's your two variations for your hip opener today. Or if you want to take something else you like, go for it. Do what you like to do. And gently begin to bring yourself out of the pose. If you're on your belly, gently rock, walk those hands back towards your body. And make your way, everybody make your way back to a downward facing dog. If you want to shake out that hip, get the blood flowing again. Whatever you want to do. And then come to stillness and let's set up for our half pigeon on the other side. Deep breath in, lift that left leg high to the sky. Bring that left knee behind the... Left wrist, parallel the shin to the front of the mat. Peek back at the back leg, make sure it's nice and straight. Square the hips, set it nice and tall. And exhale, fold forward. Or if you want to do it on your back, just do the opposite of what you did on the other side. So both feet flat on the mat. Take that left foot, cross over the right thigh, and you're there. Press the knee open. Reach through, grab onto the shin if you like for a stretch. Reach back, grab 
behind a thigh. So many variations, whatever serves you. Slowly begin to bring yourself up out of the pose. And then gently make your way back to downward facing dog. Once again, you can take that left hip and shake it all out, getting the blood flowing again. Then when you're ready, let's come to stonus. Gently lower down your knees, cross the feet at the ankles. And come to seating with your feet towards the front of the mat. Then we're going to bring the the soles of the feet to touch. Allow the knees to fall open wide. You can grab onto the feet if you like or open them up like a book. Take a deep breath in. Roll the shoulders back and down. And fold forward for your butterfly. Slowly sit back up, and let's take those legs light, nice and long. Maybe drum out the feet if you want. Ground down through the sit bones. Reach up nice and tall, deep breath in. Exhale, fold forward over both legs. Carefully release the feet, make your way up to sitting and come to all the way back to lying on your backs, hugging the knees and the chest. And then let's grab onto the knife edges of our feet for happy baby pose. You could stay still. If you want, you can rock side to side. And then let's bring the knees back to center, hug them into your chest. Then allow the arms to fall nice and wide like a T, and gently let the knees fall over to your right side. Gaze over that left shoulder for a nice gentle supine twist. As we begin to wind down our practice today. Gently bring the knees back to center and allow them to fall over to your left side. Gaze over the right shoulder. Bring the knees back to center. Hug everything in. Take a nice deep breath. Give yourself a nice... Nice big squeeze, maybe draw that forward up to the knees, deep breath in, then on your exhale, gently allow everything to fall nice and gently to the mat, arriving at our final most healing pose of Shavasana. So just relax, let go of the breath, let go of the practice, allow that body to melt to the mat, and simply allow yourself to just be.
Remaining in stillness, begin to breathe awareness back in your body, returning to your normal pattern of breath. And start to find some gentle movement in your, your to fingers and your toes, beginning to reawaken the body. And take a nice deep breath in, reach the arms nice and long overhead for a nice full body stretch. Bring the soles of your feet to the mat one at a time, and gently roll over onto your right side, using your bicep as a pillow, pausing here for a few brief moments to ground yourself in gratitude, thanking yourself for showing up for your practice today, taking time out of your busy schedule for a little bit of self-care. And keeping the eyes closed, gently press yourself up to an easy seated position facing the front of your mat. Bring our hands to prayer at heart center. Let's take one more nice deep breath. Arms nice and high. Exhale, hands back to prayer at heart center. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for showing up and practicing with me today. As always, enlighten me, honors, enlighten each and every one of you. And until we meet again, let us all share together. Namaste. So thank you guys all for playing along today with my little have other animal poses that maybe didn't make the class. If you guys have any suggestions, let me do this again sometime. So send along some suggestions. If not, take care.